Now that we've looked at summarizing data, we've looked at probabilities, now we're going to look at it in terms of discrete probabilities here in chapter 5. And then chapter 6, 7, and 8, we start getting into continuous probabilities in what's called normal distribution. So with this chapter, though, we're going to cover just discrete probabilities. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what's discrete? What does the word discrete mean? Discrete is when it is basically an integer. And so discrete data, again, is it can be a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, but not 1.8, not 1.854972, where that's continuous data. So for example, we talk about um, the number of TVs sold in a day, it would have to be one, two, three, it'd have to be an actual discrete value or integer. But if we're talking about dollars, now we're talking about continuous data because it has a decimal place. So if it has a decimal place, it's continuous. If it is um, an integer, then we're talking about discrete. <clears throat> what we will do is talk about random variables and discrete random variables here for this chapter. Talk about how to calculate the expected value and variance, and then we will talk about binomial distribution. We will not talk about any other type of discrete probability distributions, only probability, binomial probability. So again, we're talking about a random variable. It means when there can be a, a different um, outcome for an, ex, uh, an experiment, discrete random variable then is a uh, value that is an integer uh, style, where continuous will then be something that is um, either interval or ratio type data. And it, uh, just think of it as having a decimal place. Let's look at an example here. JSL appliances, looking at TVs sold, and if you're looking at the number of TVs sold at a store in a given day, where X can take on five different values, which means they've never sold more than four in a day, but they've definitely sold zero, one, two, three, four. Well, what is uh, what can we do with this type of data? So we're going to look at different number of days, and then based on that, we can look at frequencies. And then we can also do a couple of other things with discrete data, as you'll see here with binomial. So again, X is then the um, number of customers arriving where uh, X can take on 0, 1, or 2, 3, 4, and so on. And in this case, a uh, person, in terms of that, can either, let's say there's a sample of 30, then we have 30 values of X. It's either a yes or a no and we can then make the determinant of how many in the, that day actually uh, bought. So was it three, was it two, was it one? So random variables really um, are looking at different things, for example, like family size. You obviously can be one or more, but you aren't going to be a continuous value. That's why it's considered discrete. Distance from home to store, obviously is continuous. Again, there is no uh, exact amount because every time you measure, depends on how close you are measuring, determines whether it's um, uh, one mile or 1.2 miles or 1.258 miles or 1.25859. That's a continuous. It's all basically the same thing. And then you can also look at discrete data being whether you own a cat or not, and then you categorize based on that. Do you own no pets? Do you have a dog? Do you have a cat? Do you have both? And if you're like me, do you have three dogs in your house? Um, and that would put me uh, way above any of this kind of stuff here. Actually, make me a two on this list because I do not own a cat, but I do have more than one dog. So looking in terms of a, probably, a probability distribution with discrete data, it's good just to kind of look at it here. And again, we know that, it, let's say there are 200 total days, and out of that, you see that 80 of them, you had zero TVs sold. 50 of those days, one TV sold. 40 of the days, two, and then 10, and then 20, based on the different units sold. And then you can look at that in terms of a uh, frequency uh, distribution, or probability distribution, and see what the percentage of each one is. So what's the probability of nobody buying a TV today? Well, it is 40% uh, based on 80 divided by 200. Let me ask you this. What's the average number 
of TVs sold in a day. Looking at this data, can you come up with that? And that would be an expected value. So again, you've got your different percentages here. And then this is what it looks like on a uh, graph. And you can see you're more likely to not sell or only sell one as opposed to three or four. So if you come in and say today's a day that it's uh, three or four, it's not as likely to occur as just zero by itself. Okay, so let's look at that expected value. So expected value is looking at those percentages, looking at the possible outcomes, zero, one, two, three, and four, and coming up with the average, basically, based on the um, discrete value and its probability. And then we can also come up with variance using kind of the same formula that we did back in chapter three, except instead of dividing by the sample size, we are multiplying by its probability. So first, let's take a look at how you come up with the expected value. It's actually quite easy. If you take, let's get our pen here. Pen color, we'll go with red again, easy to see. If I take zero and multiply it by 0.4, obviously it gives me zero. If I multiply one times 0.25, it gives me that 0.25. 2 times 0.2 gives me that 0.4, and so on down to give me these values. And then I add these up, and that gives me my expected number of TVs sold in a day. So I can use that as kind of my average. And of course, if I was to take all 200 days, add them all up, divide by 200, I would also get 1.2. But when you're given data just as you see it here on the screen, then this is the way that you would calculate your expected value. Again, want to preface that I'm going through this quite quickly. If you want to really see the how-to part, then what you have to do is obviously go into the homework manager, watch the guided examples, as well as the show me uh, solutions, and, uh, and then also uh, the book that's there available to you as well. And that's how you really want to uh, focus on the how-to part. But why is this important? Well, what does this tell us? It gives us kind of an average, so I can kind of come up with, well, how, how many will I sell on average on a given day? It does help us out. What will I sell in a week? If I'm open five days, looks like I'll sell six uh, TVs in a week. And I can base my inventories on this kind of information quite easily. <clears throat> Variance is a little bit more tricky, but you should be able to do this. And if you are able to do standard deviation and variance in chapter three, then you should be able to take zero minus the mean. As you can see here, here's the mean. That gives me that negative 1.2, the negative 0.2, and so on down. And then I'm gonna square it. Then I'm gonna multiply these two numbers together to equal this final column over here. And then I do that five different times, add them up, and that gives me my variance. And we all know that when I take the square root of variance, it gives me standard deviation. So give this a try, see if you can get the uh, values, go through the guided examples through the book and through the homework manager, Hopefully that'll help you out as well to come up with variance. Here's an example of how you can uh, do this in a Excel. And so if you take all the same stuff, plug in these formulas over here, and you should be able to get your mean, variance, and standard deviation. And here's what your answers should be. Hopefully that helps you out um, if you like using Excel to do this. I personally will always put this into Excel and do it. I just feel like it takes a lot less time and an easy way to do it.